all with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And, you know, we've, we've split so many hairs over this topic in the Pentecostal church, from the Baptist to the Pentecostal, to the back, to the front, to the bottom, to the top. And we split so many hairs about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All I know is in the Bible, when, when, when they walked on the road and, and, and was asked, have you received the Spirit yet? And they said, we don't even know about the Holy Spirit. Isn't it amazing? You don't even have to know about the Holy Spirit to receive the Holy Spirit. They didn't like ask theological questions and went like, yeah, but what steps do we need to take to receive the Spirit? In some instances, Peter just preached at the house of Cornelius, and they were sitting there under the Word, the ministry of the Word, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit happened right there. They started speaking in tongues without asking, what do we need to do? They were born again from the Spirit, amen? Born again from above. We spoke about it last Sunday, and therefore, I don't want to put too many obstacles in your mind, because the church is complicated to think so much that people don't, are fearful, and they say, what is this baptism of the Holy Spirit? I don't want to speak in tongues, sorry, you know, and so people like walk away and they say, that's weird stuff, we don't want to hear about it, but I believe in the book of Acts, it happened because the Spirit was for everyone, God wanted the Spirit to be poured out on everyone, and in actual fact, you cannot be born again without the Spirit, you cannot live the Christian life without the Spirit, you cannot move forward without the Spirit, so whether you're baptized in the Holy Spirit or not is not the question this morning, the question is, do you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and God, is He willing to do that? Yes, He wants to do it for you, amen, and so this morning, God wants to fill you with the Spirit till overflow. And I believe that it's going to come so clear to you this morning that you're going to say, man, I'm already baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Many of you sitting here this morning, I many of you know that, many of you sitting and thinking it's still something needs to happen, but it could have happened actually, and there's one preacher that said it's actually synonymous to being born again. Come on, many people that when they were born again, they were actually baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was a work from God, amen? And so you and I need to not split hairs on this topic too much because the church has made doctrines and doctrines out of it. And so we've separated the A-class Christians from the B-class Christians. And that is such a, a trap from the enemy to separate us in the church to say, I can speak in tongues. And the other person looks at him and says, I must be like a lesser of a Christian that I can't speak in tongues. And condemnation comes upon people. And I don't want condemnation to be upon the church because that's not of God. I mean, that's of the enemy and he wants to split people up. But I want to say to you that God wants to give you his spirit. Clearly this morning, the Holy Spirit is for everybody. If you're sitting here this morning, the Holy Spirit wants to indwell you and overflow out of you. I mean, that's all that happens. When he indwells you, the baptism will be an overflow of that. And then you'll begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. You'll begin to witness in power. You'll begin to have the fire of God upon your life. You'll begin to prophesy. You'll begin to change nations and your family. Things will begin to happen. The rivers of living water will flow from your inner being. This is what happens with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's for every Christian, not for the elect few, not for the Pentecostal only, but for every Christian that has come to Christ and received Jesus and what He's done on the cross. When you're blood washed, you're ready to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And power. And so we're going to read our opening scripture this morning out of Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. And listen to this. I indeed baptize you with water. This is John speaking. Unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Isn't that so simple? John, John said, I baptize you unto repentance because you were sinners. Now that you've received what Christ has come to do for you, now you're ready to receive the overflow of the Spirit now. I mean, isn't that powerful? He says, I'm not the one that's going to baptize you. Jesus is the baptizer when it comes to the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's good theology, isn't it? He's come to baptize you in His Spirit this morning. He says, if you've been blood washed, you should be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I mean, receive the Spirit with power. 